Hey everyone, hope you're all doing very well and welcome back to another video here on the channel. In today's video, we're ultimately going to be looking at can a weaker lithium polymer battery pack perform well for our specific radio controlled vehicle. Now this video topic comes up from a bunch of comments, essentially a theme that I'm seeing here on a lot of the battery performance videos that we are doing. I'm trying to do a performance battery video every single month so we can get a database of battery statistics, battery data that ultimately shows us the best performing lithium polymer battery packs and separates those out from the worst performing lithium polymer battery packs. But today what I wanna focus on is the worst and the low performing batteries. Can those battery packs actually offer us some value? The tests that we do here on the channel consist of two independent tests for every battery pack that we test. And that is, we do a 105 amp load test, which gives us a bunch of voltage values and we watch the performance curve of the battery pack as it discharges at this rate. Some of the battery packs make it the full capacity of their you know rated spec. Some battery packs stop halfway short. Some battery packs overheat and don't even pass the test. So this is how we ultimately are able to determine even a real C rating because if a battery pack can't pass a 105 amp test we know that the C rating is definitely not anywhere close to whatever gets us that 105 amp load. Now the other way that we test battery packs is we look at the labeled C rating and we compare that against the actual C rating as we are able to calculate based off of internal resistance. This gives us a really good idea and I'm quite big on this here on this channel because it's something very simple that everyone can do at home and we can get a good understanding of the own battery packs that we own at home. Now I want to talk about a really good example that shows us you know part of the problem because I think battery pack manufacturers should be held to a certain standard or a certain expectation and that expectation revolves around the C rating. Being able to provide us with good quality data, good quality values that are placed on labels so we know exactly what we are purchasing. And a good example that I have here is that we've tested a 45C rated battery. I'm going to throw some data up here on the screen and we compared that against a 100C rated battery. Now the 100C rated battery pack had a higher capacity than the 45C rated battery pack. However, the 45C battery pack as it shows right here performs better than the 100C rated battery pack. This is obviously shows a major gap within the RC community, the RC industry, as it's related to the C rating. Now we talk about this and the big question that we want to answer here is, does that mean that the 100 C rated battery pack is a no-go, performs poorly, provides no value, that sort of thing to an end user such as you or I? And the quick and easy answer here is absolutely not. We can see great amounts of value if we have a application that best suits it. Now, if you're coming at it from the perspective of buying a 100 C rated battery pack, and we now have shown that we're not able to get 100 C of performance out of this, this would pretty much imply that yes, you're not getting the expected amount of performance. So the value that you're getting into the battery pack is overall lower. However, if you don't care about performance and you don't care about the C rating that is actually slapped onto the label of this specific battery pack, that doesn't mean that it doesn't or won't be able to perform well for you. In in fact, there's a lot of applications where a 100C rated battery pack performing only at a less than 20C rated actual rated battery performs very well. If you're drawing only 20 to 50 amps continuously, this means on average essentially, you probably will see good performance out of this battery pack. Another way to look at it is if you're not actually drawing peak values where you're holding a high amount of current for a very long time and that value is quite low, you're not going to see a lot of the major voltage drops that this battery pack is going to have within it. So therefore, if you're getting the battery pack for a decent value and we're talking about cost wise, and this battery pack can absolutely give you good value because you're getting the battery for cheap as long as it provides you the capacity and expectation of capacity that you're able to get a good runtime, then you can see this is a good battery for you and a good battery for your specific application. Now I want to use this same 100C rated battery pack which is the rapid line from Turnigy. I want to talk about the performance that we get out of that specific battery pack and compare it against the best tested battery pack that we've done here on the channel. Now all the batteries that I've tested 
tested so far, as you know from previous videos, have been more of the economy type battery packs. We haven't yet ventured out into the more expensive battery packs because I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to purchase and acquire and get these battery packs. I have two problems, of course, the cost, not much of a problem, but everything is essentially funded by this channel. All the money that this channel makes essentially goes right back into and into the channel and anything in addition to that, I pay out of pocket. And I'm not afraid to do that. I very much like the hobby and I'm fully committed to being able to do that. And I appreciate all the patrons here for the RC Explained community there, helping to support this endeavor as well. We are not just benefiting ourselves, we are benefiting the whole entire community by doing these types of videos that show performance that we get and also the other videos that we do talk about other things other than battery packs. However, I have been putting a lot of focus and emphasis on what I and many of you feel is important within the community and that is lithium polymer battery pack performance. As you can imagine, lithium polymer battery packs don't want to send me a battery pack. I've had about five or six battery pack manufacturers who have offered to send me a battery pack, but as soon as they find out how I'm going to test the battery pack, that's the end of that discussion. They move on. They do not want to go and send it. So now let's go back to performance and looking at the best battery pack and the worst battery pack. This is a really good point that I want to make here. Looking at these two types of battery packs, one performing, this is our weakest performing, it was a 5,000 milliamp hour 100C rated battery pack. It performed at a level of 315 watts per cell versus our best at 372.1 watts. Now if we make this equal so that we're essentially saying it's a 4S battery pack, this would be essentially 1,260 watts of power being dissipated from our weaker battery pack versus 1,490 watts from our good battery pack our best battery pack. That's a difference of only 230 watts. Now 230 watts, I'm sure a lot of you probably would recognize the difference. I would bet that the vast majority of us would not notice that much of a difference. We would notice maybe a subtle difference, but it wouldn't be significant and it certainly wouldn't warrant us spending a lot more money to get that better performing battery pack. Now to answer our original question here of can weaker lithium polymer battery packs perform well for our specific application, if your expectation is to get good performance out of your radio control vehicle, the good performance might be that 1260 watts that you're going to get out of that specific battery pack. And if that is true, then you might see good value. There is nothing wrong with seeing good value from a battery pack that is performing, you know, lower than average, below average, if your expectation is not for it to be the best performing battery pack. That is the biggest difference that I see when we're talking about weaker lithium Palmer battery packs performing well in certain applications. When you look at the results of that test and you look at it from a different perspective, the difference looks somewhat more marginal. However, if you look at it back at the test that we're trying to do and you really understand what's going on between these two different battery packs, if you do force the weaker battery pack to perform at a very high level, you are going to see a lot more heat generated in that battery pack that is only giving you a certain amount of power, a lesser amount of power. And this heat that gets generated starts to eat away at the lifespan of the battery pack, starts to eat away at the performance that you're getting. If you're trying to expect maximum performance for your radio control vehicle, you will want to buy and purchase a battery pack that performs well so you can hit your speed goals, your targets, your performance targets, and these sorts of things. Well guys, that's all I wanted to really cover for this. I hope that gives you a good idea of lithium polymer battery packs and also how we are testing battery packs here on this channel. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.